Hello BPED students! Good day to all of you. I would like to welcome you in our subject, MP18 Process of Teaching, Physical Education, and Health. I am Max Edward Ramos from BPED 3B, the leader of Team Gold Diggers. Today, we are giving you the important lessons about the learning styles as it is our topic for today. With that, here are the learning objectives of our lesson for today. At the end of the lesson, the student should be able to Identify the VARC learning style, its purpose, and background. Second, understand the different characteristics of 21st century learners and learning skills. And last, examine the gardener's multiple intelligences. And of course, we have here the learning content. These are the concepts you will get to know in this video. The first one is the four learning styles you will learn about the VARC model in here if you don't know what it means don't worry as you may counter it later on the second one the second topic is about the characteristics of 21st century learners here you will know the forces and other characteristics of 21st century learners the third and the last one is the gardener's multiple intelligence. In this topic, you will learn about the nine intelligence a human might have. Without further ado, let's just dive right into the lesson. My name is Beros Bautista. Now, I'm gonna discuss to you the some part um, of types of learning styles. So first, we have um, visual. In order to access and understand new knowledge, Visual learners prefer the use of pictures, diagram, and graphic organizer in other ways. So visual learners learn best using images, pictures, colors, and maps to organize, retain, and access information. They use visualizations, picturing their ideas, drawing, or drawing concepts, and so on. And because of that, they imagine objects, plants, outcomes in their minds, and they have um, a good special sense. So, dito sa visual, um, mas madali natin o ng mga estudyante na natututunan o mas naintindihan ang isang lesson o isang bagay sa tulong ng ating mga nakikita. Saka, mas prefer nila ang mga pictures or images to gain or access information. So, kaya nga visual eh, it means you learn by seeing or looking. So, sa visual learners, you will, um, first, we have um, take detailed notes rather than get involved in discussion. Second, maaari kang upo at pumunta sa harapan um, para makita mo yung mga images or pictures sa mga presentations. Um, last, so last is may benefits ang illustrations and presentations and especially those in colors. So next is auditory. In circumstances such as lectures and group meeting, auditory um, learners understand fresh material better by listening and speaking. So oral learners use repetition and benefit from the use of visual aids um, as a study technique in other ways. So, auditory means you learn from hearing and listening. So, auditory sometimes tinatawag din na oral learners. Mga auditory learner mas prefer nila yung makinig sa information that is presented vocally. So, these learners work well in group settings um, kung saan vocal collaboration is present and may enjoy to reading aloud themselves too. Maaari kang ma-enjoy sa discussion and talking things through and makipag-usap to others and second, acquire or obtain knowledge by reading aloud. Read and write Students with a powerful preference for reading and writing learn best by sentence. As extensive note-takers or Enthusiastic readers, 
this student can introduce themselves and can translate abstract ideas into words and essay. Ibig sabihin, ang mga mag-aaral na may malakas na kagustuhan sa pagbabasa at pagsusulat ay pinakamahusay na natututo sa pamamagitan ng mga pangusap. Minsan ay kilala ito bilang pangalawang visual modality para sa pag-aaral. Ang pagbabasa at pagsusulat ay isang estilo ng pagkatuto kung saan ang mga individual ay nakakakuha at nakakapagpanatili ng pinakamarami informasyon sa teksto kumpara sa imahe at simbolismo. Kung baga, mas natututo sila sa pamamagitan ng pagbabasa ng mga lecture notes, pagsulat ng mga sanaysay, pagbabasa sa pamamagitan ng mga aklat aralin, pagsulat ng mga talaat, iba pa. Kinesthetic Through physical representative of knowledge, students who are kinesthetic learners understand information better. These learners are hands-on learners who learn best by knowing this by hand. Ibig sabihin, pinakmahusay na tututo sa pamamagitan ng pag-alam ng mga bagay sa pamamagitan ng mga kamay. Ang mga kinesthetic na mag-aaral ay natututo sa pamamagitan ng paggawa. Nakakatulong sa kanila na matandaan ang mag ang mga gawain hands-on at totoong buhay na karanasan. For example, mas natututo si Max Edward kapag na-experience niya ang isang bagay at mas gusto niyang sumali sa mga physical activity kaysa sa mga naririnig lang niya. Ibig sabihin, mas active ang mga kinesthetic learners sa mga physical activity kaysa sa mga symposium program. Vart Learning Styles There are many different ways of categorizing learning styles, but Neil Fleming Bart model is one of the most popular. In 1987, Neil Fleming, a high school and university teacher from New Zealand, developed the most widely used learning style that was designed to help students and others learn more about their individual learning preferences. More about learning style Learning style is described as a group of characteristic attitudes and behaviors that define the way of learning of each individual. Different styles influence Una, the way students learn. Pangalawa, how teacher teach and influence the interaction between teacher and students. So, ayan. Good day everyone. My name is Lorraine Joy G. Kaoso. Ano nga ba si learning style? Si learning style is, is described as a group of characteristics, attitudes, and behaviors that define the way of learning of each individual. Si learning style is may iba't iba siyang part or may iba't iba siyang types kung paano nga ba natututo ang bawat learners bilang isang individual. At it, it is simply means this, this is their different approaches or a way of learning. Ano nga ba yung mga different style na naka-influence sa kanila? First is the way that students learn. How teachers teach and influence the interaction between teacher and students. And now let's proceed to the history and purpose of the Bark model. Ano nga ba yung Bark model? Si Bark model is yung diniscuss kanina ni Beirus at ni Marlene na si visual learners, si auditory learners, si reading and writing learners or si kinesthetic and arithmetic learners. Ngayon pag-uusapan natin yung history and purpose ni Bark model. First is, there are many different ways of categorizing learning style, but Neil Fleming's Bark model is the one of the most popular. In 1987, Neil Fleming, a high school and university teacher from New Zealand, developed the most widely used learning style. Ano ba yung purpose kung bakit dinisign si Bark model? The purpose Uh, this model is to help the students and others to learn more about their individual learning preferences. Hello there, I'm Barrow James, as is my work on the PED TV, and this is the continuation of our report. We now let's proceed to the characteristic of 21st century learners. So first, we have a creativity and innovation. So creativity is defined as the use of imagination, or original ideas to create something in order to be creative thinker. Individuals who are innovative are set apart 
from others since they are able to problem solve using their creative skills. So, creativity is the uh, ability to come up with uh, new and exciting ideas. So, okay, from creativity, ano, nakapag-analyze tayo ng mga sagot sa at gamit ang ating isipan. So, for example, nakapagsagot tayo ng math problem kahit hindi, ta- kahit hindi na natin ito sinusulat sa ating kamay o sa ating notebook. Uh, nasagot na natin ito nakapag produce tayo ng sagot gamit ang ating isip. So, ganun na din sa mga presentation o mga performance na kung saan gumag- gumagana ang ating creative skills, uh, creative idea, na kung saan isip lamang ang gagana. So, well, in innovation, ito naman yung pagkabuo ng mga bagay from creativity na nabubuo to innovation. So, for example, the invention of the motorcycle make them uh, realize that they can also ride bikes without making any extra efforts. They just have to click the switch and it starts automatically. In this example, the thought of creation of a new traveling motorcycle is creativity. That the actual uh, in- invention of it is innovation. So another example of that is yung computer. Di ba yung, yung early 90s, ang ginagamit lang natin learning materials is visual aid. Or kung saan, ginagamit tayo ng mga mayroon na paper, kartolin na band paper, o ito ano pa mga pwede natin gamitin pang design para sa ating report. So, uh, either ito ay reporting or recitation. So, patagalitas ng panahon at sa develop na ang technology, nagkaroon na ng laptop kung saan uh, mas pinaganda ang mga presentation na is uh, pinag-improve gamit ang technology. So, dati kung ang link ang ginagawa natin ay effort kung effort Uh, Gupit, uh, sulat, sulat, o kung baga, mano-mano, yun to say. So, sa ating lutas ng panahon, dito na pumapasok yung innovation dahil sa, sa technology na na-invento ng mga creator. Uh, napakalaki yung impact nito dahil dito, mas pinaganda ang ating presentation at naging uh, presentable dahil nga sa PowerPoint na ating ginagamit ngayon. So, dito sa example nito, dito pumapasok yung creativity at the process papunta sa innovation na para makabuo ng isang bagay bag, or bagay-bagay. So, next is communication and collaboration. So, communication is the practice of convening ideas quickly and clearly. It is expressing thoughts clearly, crisply, uh, Articulating opinions, communicating coherence, uh, instruction, motivating others through powerful speech. So, communication is ito sa learning styles na sa 21st century. Tinuturoan ng mga bata kung paano ba maki, makipag-communicate sa iba. Tinuturoan nila kung paano makipalibino o kung paano ba makipag-usap ng tama. So, gila tinuturoan din nila kung paano ba makipag-usap gamit ang sign language. So, communication ito ang isa sa mga uh, importante na tinuturo sa 21st century. So, while in collaboration, dito na pumapasok yung pagstunuhan ng isang grupo. Pagkapalita ng information, idea, pagbibigay ng mga concern, skills, uh, experiences, creativity, opinion, and suggestion para makabuo ng bagay-bagay. So, for example, paggawa ng mga makabagong intention ngayong 21st century tulad ng computer. So, alam naman natin na hindi ito magagawa ng isang tao para mabuo ang isang invention. So, pinagsasama-sama nila ang kanilang ideas, uh, kanilang uh, skills, talent, para makabuo ng bagay gamit ang innovation. Hi, I am Max Edward Ramos and we will now proceed to our next topic and It is also um, a part of the characteristics of 21st century learners. And it is called the critical thinking and problem solving. So when we say critical thinking, it is about um, thinking beyond a normal person can give. So 
it is composed of analyzing and I believe that it comes with decision making because when you came to think or decide you must have this skill so critical thinking comes with decision making and of course um, it involves um, observations and observational skills that a person has so when there is a problem so critical thinking comes and critical thinking happens so why so when we say um, if there's a something that um, we can solve or we can get through it of something or a situation where we is stuck and can't choose or can't decide what to do so and that is when the problems of course and when there is a problem we need to resolve a problem in order to um, free from to free ourselves from that situation and that is when the problem solving um, comes to light we as a 21st century learner need to have critical thinking and problem solving skills so problem solving involves um, critical thinking because you need to analyze or interpret or plan what should you do or what steps are you going to take in order to overcome that a certain problem and then you also after you um the after you decide or observed what you need to do you need to come up with a decision and you need to apply the strategies you have uh you have learned or the strategies you know that might work in order to solve that problem and then that is when these two works as one so critical thinking comes with decision making and the problems comes with problem solving okay so our next characteristic is global citizens so being a global citizen so of course you acquire or you equip yourself with you consider yourself as a global citizen with global citizenship in your heart so when we say global citizen you need um, we as a 21st century learners and as a part of a uh, generation Z so we need to be aware of what is happening around us so we need to know the current issues in our not just in our society but also in other countries all over the world so as a global citizen we should be aware or we should give care on our surroundings so we need to be aware of the news of the current trends in order to adapt to the world because the world is changing and changing is inevitable and changing might occurs each and every time pass so being a global citizen is being a transparent so you need to be aware and be responsible of your actions that you will do and as a global citizens we are bringing pride to our countries and we are equipping ourselves with responsibilities that not just a good citizen to your own country but being as a responsible citizen all over the world so we need to be globally competitive even if we are just students we should prepare ourselves for the future and when it comes that we get a chance to uh, work internationally so the people in other countries would admire us because we have these skills as a global citizen 
we are globally competitive and equipped with the skills that we can use in globalization or communicating with other people in other countries so we are not just using our excellence or our talent or our skills in our own country but we should be um we should be uh, future mind minded we should envision the future that we're just not just limit let's just not limit ourselves on what we can do that we can only work here or we can only serve for our country but also we can show to the other country or to the world what we can do and that is what global citizens mean for us as a 21st century learner so we need to be aware of our surroundings and we should uh, know how to make or how to bring um, success or improvement or progress in our economy and how to contribute in our country and then we should be globally competitive even if we are just students we should just prepare or foresee what we can do or we should have visions on what can we contribute to the world Good day to everyone, this is Jan Eldridge Jason Jago from the Ped 3B. So here is the continuation. So, technology literacy. Learners of the 21st century are digital natives. They are familiar to constant changes or technological changes and welcome any technological advances when they happen. They must be able to analyze information objectively and to learn what is important and what to discard so that they can share information as conclusive analysis to others and as I remember technology literacy is the ability of an individual or the ability of person working independently and with others to responsibly appropriately and effectively uh, use to use technology tools or as their medium to access, manage, integrate, evaluate, create, and of course to share uh, communication or to share important information. So, the po ang sinasabi daw na yung technology, yung technology literacy daw is, kumbaga parang nakafocus na tayo sa digital device digital devices so di ba binanggit doon digital natives meaning that people are concerned or focusing about the devices or the digital that we use to share information or other to communicate to others so sinasabi ni technology literacy na yung tao daw mas nagiging effective or efficient kapag ginagamit nila yung technology even up to this, this even up to this day Di ba parang yung tao, masanay na sila sa, sa cellphone or sa gadgets, sa laptops, ganyan. Kapag, like for example, di ba, during our online class, so we need to use technology or devices to cope up or to keep up in online class. So, sinasabi yung technology li literacy na, si technology literacy daw ay mas natutulungan yung isang tao na para mapadali yung gawain. Like for example nga, ba Sa online class, ba may assignments, ganun. Pwede tayo mag-search sa Google. We can use social media platforms to share information. So, yun yung naitutulong ni technology literacy sa ating buhay. So, binanggit din doon, a technologically literate person cannot know how each technology works. But, it's advantages and disadvantages how to operate it and so on but he or she can learn enough about a product to put it to good use or to choose not to use it lifelong learners the main factors of lifelong learning skills are globalization and technological development and students must adjust to these skills and knowledge to become successful in a different so Lifelong learning is a form of self-initiated education that is focused on personal development. While there is no standardized definition of lifelong learning, it has generally been taken to, to refer 
to the learning that occurs outside of a formal education institute, institute such as school, university, or corporate learning. So, lifelong learning does not necessarily have to restrict itself to informal learning. However, it is best described as being voluntary with the purpose of achieving personal fulfillment. The means to achieve this could result in informal or formal education. So, sinasabi dito sa lifelong learners na every student is... Uh, the factors of the life lear lifelong learning skills are the globalization. So, parang sinasabi dito na every student na kailangan maging global, hindi na globally competitive but in the right way. Of course, we need to adjust, student must adjust to the skills and knowledge to become successful in the different. So, here's the importance of lifelong learning. So, while you're pursuing personal interests and passions or chasing professional ambitions, lifelong learning can help us to achieve personal fulfillment like what I said before and of course this, the personal satisfaction. So it recognizes that humans have a natural drive to explore, learn and grow and encourages us to improve our own quality of life and sense of self-worth by paying attention to the ideas and goals that inspire us. Good day everyone, I'm Jenica Mee Sibuma from Ipet 3 b and I'm one of the reporters of the Gardener's Multiple Intelligences. The theory of multiple intelligences was first proposed by Howard Gardner in his 1983 book, Frame Someone where he broadens the definition of intelligence and outlines several distinct types of intellectual competencies. Gardner developed a series of 18 conclusion criteria when evaluating each candidate intelligence that was based on a variety of scientific disciplines. So, the proposed multiple intelligence in 1983 in the book of Howard Gardner's The Frames of Mind. So, sa librong ito, nakapaloob dito yung de definition ng intelligence and the outline several distinct types of intellectual competencies. Gardner developed a series of eight inclusion criteria when evaluating each candidate intelligence that was based on a variety of scientific disciplines. Gardner has developed eight multiple intelligences, and the first one is the verbal linguistic intelligence. People who are strong in linguistic verbal intelligence are able to use words well, both when writing and speaking. These individuals are typically very good at writing stories, memorizing information, and reading. So, when we say linguistic intelligence, sila yung mga learners na natututo by writing and speaking. They are typically good at reading, writing, telling stories, and memorizing information along with things. They tend to learn best by reading, taking notes, listening to lectures, and discussion and debate. So, yung may mga ganitong talino is may hilig sa pagbabasa, pagsusulat, and pakikipag-debate or pakikipag-debate. So, the potential career choices in linguistic verbal intelligence are lawyer, author, journalist, and many more. Next is logical, mathematical, or number reasoning. People with logical mathematical intelligence such as Albert Einstein and Bill Gates have an ability to develop equations and proofs, make calculations, and solve abstract problems. People who are strong in logical mathematical intelligence are good at reasoning, recognizing patterns, and lo logically analyzing problems. These individuals tend to think conceptually about numbers, relationships, and patterns. So, the logical mathematical intelligence is about number and reasoning smart. So, yung mga taong with lots of logical intelligence ay interesado sa patterns, categories, and relationships. They enjoy mental challenges, seeking out solutions to logical abstract and mathematical problems, and have good deductive reasoning. So, karaniwan sa mga ganitong may talino is naga accountant statistician, scientist, at marami pang iba na about problem solving. Next is the bodily kinesthetic or body smart. 
Bodily kinesthetic intelligence is the potential of using one's full body or parts of the body, like the hand or the mouth, to solve problems or to fashion products. So those who have high bodily kinesthetic intelligence are said to be good at body movement, performing actions, and physical control. Ito yung mga learners na may hilig sa body movements, performing actions, and physical control. So yung mga taong may ganitong talino is mataas yung tinatawag na muscle memory. People who are strong in this area tend to have excellent hand-eye coordination and dexterity. So people with bodily kinesthetic intelligence are skilled at dancing and sports, enjoy creating things with his or her hands, have excellent physical coordination, remember by doing rather um, than hearing or seeing. So, kung ang isang tao ay may strong bodily kinesthetic intelligence, ang maaaring maging career or the career choices na pwede dito is dancer, builder, builder, sculptor, and actor. Okay na guys po ba? So, para mas maintindihan nyo mabuti, ang uh, linguistic intelligence or word smart is about written and spoken. And the logical mathematical intelligence or number and reasoning smart naman is about problem solving. And the bodily kinesthetic intelligence is the ability to use the body to express emotion as in dance and body language. To play a game as in sports and to create a new product as in invention. So let's move on to the intrapersonal or the um, self-smart. So uh, good at being aware of their own emotional states, feelings, and motivations. They tend to enjoy self-reflection um, and analysis, uh, including daydreaming, exploring relationships with others, and assessing their personal strength. So, when we talk about the um, interpersonal or the self-smart, uh, it entails the capacity to understand oneself, to understand one's feelings, fears, and motivations. It's not just uh, what you are, but who you are. And also, it defined as within um, a person that is talking place within a person's self or mind. So, like for example, um, someone with in intrapersonal intelligence such as Albert Einstein or Socrates may also have the potential for improved verbal and numerical intelligence. So, um, people with intrapersonal intelligence has uh, they analyze their strengths and weakness well. Uh, they enjoy analyzing theories and ideas. Have uh, they have analyzing or ex they have excellent self awareness, and uh, they understand the basis for his or her own motivations and feelings. And also, if you're strong in interpersonal intelligence, good career choices for you are as philosopher, uh, you can also be a writer, theorist, and also a scientist. We have here the musical or the sound smart. So, uh, they are good in thinking patterns, rhythms, and sounds, has a strong uh, appreciation for music, and often uh, good at musical compositions and performance. Their strengths are rhythms and music. So, people with musical uh, intelligence enjoy singing and playing musical instruments. They also recognize uh, musical patterns and tone tones easily, then remember songs and melodies. They also have a rich understanding of um, musical structure, rhythm, and notes. So, when, uh, um, if you are strong in musical intelligence, uh, good career choices for you are, uh, for example, um, you can be a musician, also a composer, um, a singer, a music teacher and also be a uh, conductor. Interpersonal 
or the people is smart. So, those who have strong interpersonal intelligence are good and understanding and interacting with other people, skilled and assessing emotions, motivations, desires. So, uh, they can communicate well verbally and non-verbally. So, people with interpersonal intelligence uh, communicate well verbally. Uh, also, they are skilled on non-verbal c- communication and they see situations from different perspectives. They also create positive uh, relationships with others and resolve conflicts in group settings. So, put, uh, they have potential. If you are if you are strong in interpersonal intelligence, good career choices for you are become a psychologist, a philosopher, counselor, also a salesperson, and um, a politician. Good day everyone, my name is Christopher Bistro and this is the continuation of the report. Next is visual spatial or the visual smart. Visual spatial intelligence refers to the people's ability to view or visualize the world in its three dimensions. People with high spatial intelligence are generally very creative and usually have a vivid imagination, high artistic ability, and excellent spatial reasoning. These people are often referred to as a picture smart and can be found in professions such as architecture, design, and map reading. While when discussing visualizing the world in 3D, it involves the following capabilities like mental imagery, spatial reasoning, image manipulation, and artistic skill. First is mental imagery. It is being able to draw up an image or picture without an external stimulus, drawing from memories or previous experience. In other words, the detail of someone's imagination. Second is spatial reasoning. It is being able to think about objects in 3D and draw generalizations despite having limited information. Mention a pyramid and a people with visual spatial intelligence will be able to visualize how that pyramid will look from the front or the top. The third is image manipulation. It is being able to visualize changes to an image before they have been implemented. For example, an artist visualizing how their picture will look before they have drawn it. And for the last is artistic skills. It is being able to create artwork. This also includes a graphic skills. You have high visual spatial intelligence if you have a high awareness of your surrounding environment, you have a good sense of direction, you enjoy playing jigsaw puzzles and game based around navigation, you daydream a lot, and you enjoy being creative. Great careers for people with visual spatial intelligence include architect, geometry teacher, engineer, surveyor, urban planner, graphic artist, interior decorator, photographer, pilot, or cartographer. The next one is the naturalist or the nature smart. Naturalist intelligence refers to the ability to read and understand nature, having sensitivity to the non-living elements of all living things is considered nature smart. Have you noticed how some people can make anything grow? It as if they have a green town. Others connect with animals easily and some are completely at home in nature. Naturalistic intelligence describes people who are sensitive to the natural world. They enjoy being outside, nurturing, and exploring the environment. People with high naturalistic intelligence are sensitive to subtle changes in nature and the environment around them. You have high naturalist intelligence if you love nature and spending time outdoors, you connect easily with animals, you're good at raising or taking care of animals and plants. Great careers for people with naturalistic intelligence include botanist, oceanographer, count counselor, 
scout troop leader, gardener, astronomer, meteorologist, geologist, or landscape architect. The last intelligence is existential or the life smart. Existential intelligence refers to deep sensitivity and people's ability to handle deep questions such as the meaning of existence. It's one of the most complex of the nine types of intelligence listed in Garner's research. People with existential intelligence are not only comfortable talking about these serious questions but also strive to find the answer. While many of us are happy with going about our lives day by day, people with high levels of existential intelligence often think more deeply about daily occurrences. They ask questions similar to why are we here and what is the point of all this. They are often deeply philosophical thinkers and they have the capacity to look for answers to questions bigger than themselves. Existential intelligence is often called spiritual or moral intelligence. You have high existential intelligence if you genuinely want to find answers to questions such as what is the meaning of life or what happens after death. And you demonstrate high sensitivity on matters related to human existence. For the great careers for people with existential intelligence includes inspirational speaker, writer, clergy, author, philosopher, economist, or blogger. And that's all the nine types of intelligence of Howard Gardner. Thank you so much.